Hello again, Akron fans, and welcome to another Exhibition Match cast. This time we're going to be on Bluffs of Anansi, which is a new map that Cryambrant made recently. And we're going to be seeing him against Ferreter on it. Let's get started. So Cryambrant currently starting on the east side of the map with Ferreter on the... Or should I say the northeast side of the map, Ferreter on the northwest side of the map. And just briefly go over the map as the game is starting up. So we have the northwest and southeast, or rather the west-northwest and east-northeast the start, as well as the east-southeast and west-southwest, with south-southwest and, well, everything in the south and north side of the map being just expansions nearby, though the direct north and south expansions are blocked off by Inceptors, which need to be destroyed, and also guarded by domes, which, or a dome in each, as well as a spire to watch over, so both players will be able to see what's going on if their opponent tries to go here, and the dome will quickly stop them if it's not destroyed first. As well, there are neutral observation hubs at the center of the map, which if players pull their units near them, they will activate and give them a wide range of vision. About, I'm pretty sure it would go all the way to about here or so. It's very similar to the Zelnaga watchtowers in StarCraft II. Anyway, see that Ferreter is setting up his opening progenerating triad, while Cronabrant is setting up his economy very quickly, getting three RPs and an importer, while sending out a Marine and his Akron over towards... which not getting close enough to deactivate the observation hub, but he's going towards the southwest. He... I believe has a special ops going towards the north. Yes, he has a special ops going towards Ferreter's base, so he will be finding Ferreter's base really quickly. While let's see, Ferreter, on the other hand, is about well 13 second mark and setting himself up again. He does have his resource processor getting quickly another one coming up, and there's the third. After that, he just can build an octo because you can only build a couple extra resource processors right off the bat, and then build another octo on top of that. So he's doing exactly that. So both players are going heavily for economy. Given the size of the map, this is not at all surprising and really what I'd recommend. In fact, I'm a little bit surprised that Cronenberg is going for the early importer. I expect he might be going for a rush, probably a Lancer rush, because besides that, I can't see any point of having an importer this early. The infantry won't be able to get over fast enough, and the map is small enough that infantry as defense would be kind of useless. Although Cronabrin does see where Ferreter is. Ferreter has not yet found Cronabrin. Ferreter has not even started to look, not even sending his Akron out to do so. He is aware now that Cronabrin is playing CISO, but he hasn't figured out where Cronabrin has started. So he might be listening, figuring out where the building noises are coming from, in which case he would be able to find out. But he wouldn't be able to have visual confirmation at this point. So Cronabrin is, like I said, building up an importer early, and I'm a bit surprised he's doing that because other than an early Lancer rush, I can't see why you do that on this sort of map. I would... I would expect you to just go for saturating the boxes first and then worry about importers, or at least get importers after this fifth or sixth RP, once you're more likely to start getting attacked. So I'm a little bit confused about that, but Cronenberg acknowledges that's a good tip, so uh, okay, that's cool. Anyway, Ferreter is in fact, however, getting his economy set up, and he does have his Akron moving out, scouting, also going to the southwest, so he's going to be finding the path he's going, he's going to be finding Cronenberg's base last, though. Akron being Akron, that's not the biggest deal. He's, on this map, he can't really rush that easily, so it won't be a problem. It's just, that is what's going to happen. And... Oh, right, and of course, Ferreter losing his Akron further in the future, but that won't be a problem. He has already moved his Akron away from his base, so the Special Ops will not kill it. And we have Cronhammer going over here with his own Akron, once again scouting out Ferreter's base. So he definitely has a better idea of what Ferreter is up to than Ferreter does of him. But, on the other hand, there isn't really much to look at. There's not a whole lot of variety at this stage in the game, especially on a map this size. Both players are going to be going for economy. It's, just, it's the entropy state of information, really. So I don't know, other than, I guess, confirming that this is the case, because a player could hypothetically rush like that, I don't expect anything unusual to be happening from there. And beyond that, both players still continue to set up. Cronhammer getting another RP, so he is definitely going more for economy now. But it looks like... I think he built another Marine. Oh, Ferrer actually getting an Octobot as well, so pushing Cronhammer away, so very quickly stopping Cronhammer from being able to scout. This is a good idea, especially in a map like... The way the boxes are set up here in this map, you can easily switch over, get one pull of QP, and then switch over to LC with this one resource processor. Which is what you need in order to get an Octobot, being that Octobots cost four more QP than you get at the very start of the game. Now, Cronabrant, on the other hand, is in fact building infantry from the looks of it. Hard to tell. I can't tell if these are his starting infantry or just 
No, these are additional infantry. He's actually taking advantage of one of the comm hubs, too. Or observation hubs, rather. So he has a pretty wide range of vision of what's going on here. Whereas Ferreter does not. And also aware of where this Guardian Akron is. So Ferreter, his Akron being given away, Kron Aberrant fully aware of where it is. And Kron Aberrant also... Oops. I'm going to be in his point of view. So his Kron is, in fact, building infantry from here. He is, like I said, rather surprising. I don't know why he's doing that. And also we see that Ferreter signing to scout with Zarticus. Sending it towards the observation hub, but just seeing that there is, in fact, one of Kronemar's units taking advantage of it. So Ferreter doing some scouting with that, and building up a bubble wrap as well, so get, definitely getting his base set up as per usual. And on a map like this, a bubble wrap like that is probably not a terrible idea. Rushes aren't a big deal, but the thing is, what you'd want to worry about there is when your opponent gets a large enough army, they can feasibly attack you. It actually attack you with enough strength to destroy you in one shot. So, given that, having three or four reefs in the base is not a terrible idea on a map like this. And it's a three minute mark, which might be a little bit early to pull that off, really. But, it still should probably work. Anyway, we see the Octopod coming in here to get rid of the Special Ops taking on the Com Hub, and actually taking to the Akron too, so Crown Armor's not going to be able to hold this Com Hub for a long time. I don't, even, I don't think he's aware of what's going on here. I doubt the Octopod will be able to win the game right away, but at the very least, it is presenting a threat. So Kronomer has jumped back and is now aware of this. He's probably going to retreat with his Akron, because he's definitely lost some control of the future. After the 418 mark, he has no Akron, so after here, he can't control anything. Because he's gone on the red time wave. He actually... Everything past on the red time wave, past this point, he cannot interact with. Unless... Well, okay, we see that he is actually moving forward enough. But if he jumps forward, he will not be able to interact with it, because his Akron is apparently dead there. Ferret, on the other hand, has nothing to worry about his Akron being safely in his base. There we go. Akron safely in his base, and a nice little bubble wrap of the reefs protecting it, so he should be fine there. And just building up more economy, while Crown Aberrant is not actually building up that much more economy. I'm getting kind of surprised now. There is one more RP, I'll probably get another one fairly soon, but... Oh, I see. Never mind. <laughs> what am I saying? He's building over in the east-southeast expansion. So he'd probably go off... No, I just realized this is actually the perfect level for clock time. So, this is the 2 o'clock. Let's go from here. So the 2 o'clock expansion, Crimer's main base, and he's going over to the 4 o'clock expansion, and taking that as his first expansion rather quickly, actually. Not surprising for CISO, however. And Ferreter going over to the 8 o'clock, finding it completely empty. Might be building up units of the Arcticus to use for expansion there, or just generally keeping himself aware of what's going on. But also building up advanced structures, so he's going to be getting air units around the expected time. Also getting a lot of domes. Ferret is really playing defensively this game. I mean, he definitely has a good amount of resources in his main base, though that does mean he'd be able to... He'd be running out of resources in his main base faster than Kron Aberrant will, so he's going to have to take a few more risks in the mid to late game in order to keep his economy going. And he also doesn't actually have a Spire yet, surprisingly enough. He's continuing to go just for domes. Ah, there we go. Now he's building up a Spire. You will be able to get Arianas by the seven, well, by the 8-minute mark or so, while Kron Aberrant, on the other hand, does ha just getting machinery at the 540 mark, so about two minutes prior, and will be able to get units from there, so probably Tornads, I would expect, though... Given that he's probably assuming Ferret is going to go air, I would expect Lancers to be coming up, but we'll see shortly once Cronobert actually starts showing what he's planning on doing. At this point, he's pretty much been just building infantry, which is of very little use unless you have gate tech. Though he is going out to... I think he's going out to expand towards the 8 o'clock expansion. Yeah, he is expanding towards the 8 o'clock expansion. And there's... The sound of another upgrade going on from the sounds of it. But I don't see anything unusual, so I guess they're not sure what I was hearing there. No upgrades, no merging, no expansion. Actually, there's a tank. Never mind, that that would be what it is. So, or no, he doesn't have grand units, so he can't actually upgrade the tank into a heavy tank. But he is going for tanks. You never see those. That's cool. I'm glad to see a tank, because players tend not to build them very much, and they are actually pretty good units. They're decent LC sinks, and they upgrade into the CISO heavy anti-air unit, the heavy tank. And we see that Kronemert is actually taking out Ferreter's 8 o'clock expansion scout, so Kronemert is really being aggressive as CISO, which is not really surprising. It's kind of what CISO always does, but... 
since we haven't seen C so much, it's kind of refreshing to see what they actually do. Ferret, like I said, being very defensive. I think he's trying to... He's playing a bit too old-style in his Grekin play. On a map like this, he could easily just spread out a bit, send off a few... Just a few probing Sepi Faro pairs to expand around the map. Although... Yeah, I think he could probably get away with it. I mean, the Inceptor might get in the way. If he managed to kill the Inceptor, then he'd be... Now they have to kill the dome. Yeah, okay, I guess it is a bit tricky to do that. But even then, he could still take advantage of the 11 o'clock expansion. At the very least, he's able to protect it fairly easily. And from there, we see that he's just continuing to build up his main base while Crown Aberrant expands nicely between two bases, getting a second factory and using both of them quite extensively. Getting ground units as well, so he can start to upgrade his tanks into heavy tanks if he wants to, which I'm sure he will. And, of course, he also gets much stronger infantry as a result, or much stronger marines, rather. The special ops don't get upgraded by crown units, just the marines and the mechs. So, crown armor looks like he's getting, starting to get pretty prepared for an assault. And, like I said before, the he heavy tanks are anti-air units. And given that Grekham has a nice tendency to go for air a lot of the time in the mid to late game, getting heavy tanks is a really good idea. That will allow crown armor to have a much easier time dealing with Ferritor's army than he would if he had just gone for pure air units. Unless, of course, he gets... If he gets a macro fab and builds frigates from there, that might work. That usually does. Frigates are pretty powerful anti-air units. But they're also more expensive than tanks. Cheaper than heavy tanks, but they're also much frailer. So it would become a rather tricky matchup there. On the other hand, air, of course, being as mobile as it is, makes it really difficult to avoid getting hit by it. It looks like Cranberry is actually preparing for the attack from the Faropod, the Faropod going towards the 1 o'clock expansion and not worrying too much about Crown Aberrant. So Crown Aberrant moving out his infantry, not sure if that's actually related, but he is moving out his infantry regardless. And we see that Ferritor continuing to build up, continuing to get more Octopods as well, surprisingly enough, I'm not sure why. But he is getting Chronoporting, so it looks like he's planning on doing a Chronoport attack, an uppercut with the Faropod here. While Crown Aberrant going towards this 1 o'clock expansion, we'll be able to find the Faropod before it becomes... Or maybe, it looks like he's trying to get his... RPs over to the 1 o'clock expansion, but not moving his infantry to it, and it would be a really good idea to do so, seeing as the Special Ops can detect the Farpod will be destroyed in very short order. Surprisingly enough, I don't see the Heavy Tank upgrade. He could upgrade the tank if he wanted to, but he is not actually doing so, which is a little bit bizarre. Though he is still aware of what's going on with the Observation Hubs, or at least he was. He's definitely got both Observation Hubs controlled. So the entire center of the map is open to him, though far pots can still go or far pots pots can still go along this this pitted area here and avoid any scouting force, any scouting, any domes, spire, anything. Nothing will be able to spot them. Although going by the dome would be unwise regardless, because the dome would kill you. And Ferritor now getting legal class as well as chronoporting, so he's really prepping up for an attack. Actually, given that he's a Sebibot coming over here, I'm Expecting he's going to go for an Octoligo proxy. Like, proxy... I should say, a proxy progen pair with a Farpod and Semipod, and then from there, use them to build up Octoligos, and then walk them in, in the unplayable past, right into Cronaburn's base and just tear it to shreds. Octoligos would have a really easy time just destroying everything Cronaburn has in his main base. Of course, this base is a bit better defended, but even then, Cronaburn doesn't have a lot to deal with it, but no, Semipod is scouting in... Ferritor might be giving away the strategy at this point, but I don't think Crown Armor is going to be fully aware of what exactly is going on. However, Ferritor needs to pull this out. I think he actually already did, from his point of view. He... Where is that Seppi Pod? Oh, it's... From his point of view, it's being constructed. We're actually about a minute down from it being killed. So it's not even born yet. Well, it's born now, but... Actually... Okay, so he's scouting around. He spots... Oh, more neutral units, actually. Blocking off the expansion over here. But... Other than that, he is not really got anything to worry about. However, I, I mean, yes, yeah, scouting around, really good idea with the Sepi Pod, so good plan for him to scout it out. And he will end up finding this expansion here that's very heavily defended. And very quickly loses the Sepi Pod as well, so definitely is aware of what is going on. But now, at this point, Lancer has spotted the Fire Pod, so whatever element of surprise Ferritor may have had with his Octoligo attack is pretty much gone, unless he goes right now and uses the Sepi Pod here to get to get Octoligos, but it's hard to tell if he's going to actually do that, and if he does that, then he's going to be set, at least for getting rid of Crown Armor's main base, but Crown Armor's expansion is going to be the real problem, and of course there's this small army building up here, 
on the east side of the map, though, he still didn't upgrade the heavy tanks. I'm not sure if he meant to do that or not, but he certainly isn't taking advantage of it. He is over getting Mar tanks, which he could merge into Twin Mar, and from there just tear everything apart. So really, Ferreter is losing the initiative. He's losing the element of surprise when it comes to what he can do with the Farpod, and he's completely abandoning it, not even chronoporting it back in the middle of Chronomer's base, which he could very easily and effectively do, but no, he is not doing that at all, and I'm quite surprised at that. Like I said, I'm surprised he didn't go for the Octoligo Proxy, but even then, I'm just surprised he's not chronoporting back and using this thing in the Impalable Past. It's a little bit bizarre. You gotta be honest, it, it, I'm quite surprised at what he's doing. So, fair to building up another Farapod, but still not taking advantage of his legal class. And there we go, now chronoporting back the Farapod, uppercutting with that. And it looks like it will be fairly effective. No special ops nearby, so he should be fine for that. However, the Tornado coming in further in the future, but this is after the far this is after the chron the chronoport of the Farapod. So what we're seeing right now is basically not actually going to happen. That Tornado will not end up finding a target because the, cr the chronoported Farapod has already chronoported and thus is already gone. So that's the big concern now we see in the Unplayable Past. Lots of damage going on. Fair to double checking what's going on there and sees that a lot of damage is being dealt. Though Chronomart has enough resources in reserve and full whole other expansion really. He might be getting a third as well fairly soon. I'm I would imagine, though I don't see any. Thus, there isn't much of a problem for him. And there comes another Mar tank, likely to merge into a Twin Mar. So I expect to see that very shortly. But... And Crime is still moving in, still getting himself prepared for a fairly powerful ground assault. Hasn't really scouted much, though. I'm not sure if he's aware exactly what Ferreter is up to or what Ferreter has built. Granted, it hasn't made much of a difference at this point, but still, knowing what Ferreter is up to might be a good idea. Or actually, no, I'm wrong. Sorry, he did send a Lancer in. That's right. So he does have a Lancer to scout out. He did see a bit of what's going on there. But even then, I mean, now he sees that there is a Chronoport going on. He sees that Chronoporting has been researched. He's fully aware of what's happening with the Farapod and losing his entire main base in the Unplayable Pass as well. Granted, not his biggest asset. That's definitely the 4 o'clock expansion right here. But still, losing his main base is still losing money. That's money he could have had, and that's... Still a bit of a shame. However, big concern right now is what is Ferreter going to do with his money? And there we go. There is one Octoligo being built right in his main base. I do not know why. I really don't. I'm, like I said, Farligo or Farpod Seppipod proxy works out very well. Or building a Farligo Seppipod in your base works out fine. But building an Octoligo in your base, they're really slow. I mean, it can work, but they're really slow. Compared to just flying in the Seppipod and Farapod and progenerating right next to your opponent's base. And that was the sound of a Twin Mar being built. So Kramer definitely has a Twin Mar going. And Seppipod coming back here as well. Should be able to get rid of the, far the Tornado that was coming in to take out the Farapod. So Kramer losing that Tornado. And Kramer just... Let's see, it sounds like he is going to be... Oh, I see. He's upgrading the turrets. That's what he's doing. That was all those sounds of upgrading. He's not actually upgrading to heavy tanks yet. I'm kind of surprised, actually. Heavy tanks would be very helpful in this particular case, but I guess he doesn't really feel the need to go for it. He's... Well, okay, his Q Plasma is a little bit low, so I guess I could see that. Now, of course, Ferret is actually inside Chronomer's main base in the Unplayable Past with that Sepipod and Farapod, so he could from there build Octoligos. And that would allow him, well, slightly closer vantage point, though even then, Octoligos against this army probably wouldn't do especially well unless they were about four or five of them. And Ferreter doesn't actually have the cash to build four or five of them. He's already built them in his, well, he's built three in his main base. So he doesn't have the cash to build an additional four or five inside Crown Amaranth's base. And where is that Farbon Sippy Bud? Unless he retreated them. That's definitely a possibility, but I think it's more that they haven't come forward. I think it's on the green time wave. So once the green time wave comes forward, we should be seeing Ferreter taking advantage of the Farbon Sippy Bud that are inside Crown Amaranth's base back at the 13 minute mark or so. Because Chronomer can't do anything right now. Chronomer has no Chronoporting. Ferret is the only one who actually has Chronoporting yet. And Chronomer... Well, very low on Q Plasma, actually. Like I said, I'm surprised he hasn't gone for a third expansion. Just, he has enough Liquid Crystal. He could easily build up four or five RPs right here. And he is moving... Or no, he is getting a Marine to build some RPs over here. Okay, so he is actually doing exactly that. Though it does feel a little bit late. And moving... His Akron in as well with everything else. I don't know if this is intentional or if this is a mistake, but he is moving his Akron in with all of his other units, so this is a very risky strategy. I'm not sure why he's pushing his Akron forward with everything else. 
I mean, on the one hand, it does mean it is most protected, but on the other hand, he's moving straight into enemy territory. But getting rid of Ferrer's expansions, Ferrer is, on the other hand, has he chronoported yet? No, he is not, but he does have these Octoligos, and they're going to be very powerful if used at all, which they most certainly will be. And here we go, this is the Sepipod Farpod I was talking about before, and they are doing nothing. Ferrer having not enough chrono energy to actually deal with them. And clearly not paying attention to them either. Probably more focused on what he's going to do about this defensive force. Sorry, with his defensive force. The Doctor League is actually moving away. I don't know, moving around to flank, I should say. But he doesn't have anything to flank with. One Sepi Ligo in his main base. And the Doctor League, one of them goes down. And the second one going down seconds later. And the third one will barely last it. Also, these Doctor Ligos are not any match for the Twin Mars. Or the Twin Mar and Mar Tank. So that is going to be a really tough position to try to get out of. And Lancer are coming in as well to the northwest, so see that the one the eleven o'clock expansion getting torn apart. Ferrader definitely expanding a lot more than Cronabert has been. I mean Cronabert did get this expansion sooner, but Ferrader now at this point has been building more he's been throwing his RPs around a lot more, but this is like I said, he had to make a lot more hard choices in the late game of what to do. And he hasn't had a chance to consolidate this expansion either, just moving his RPs away because he has to. There's nothing in his main base left. Besides, a bit surprised he didn't at least send in some scouting Sepi Faro pairs back when he had a bit more of a chance to build up an additional base over in the 11 o'clock or over in the 8 o'clock expansion. And instead just sticking to the 10 o'clock expansion and otherwise not doing too much. Rather surprising, but that's what we see. Anyway, Crown Armor definitely in a really good position economically. Let's see, saving up for a gate tech. There we go. Built it right before I could finish my sentence. And that's exactly what he's doing. So he's getting his gate tech. He's building up a comp center right next to Ferrer's base as well, so he gets a nice vision of what's going on. Though the position of that comp center is not especially great. If he placed it over here, if he had it fly over to... Doing exactly that, yes. If he does exactly what he's doing right now, his comp center will actually be of use. And of course, here we go. They have Sepi Ligo that we saw before. The Octoligo is not moving forward as they did last time, and one fewer Octoligo as well. It looks like Having lost these RPs actually did hurt Ferrer quite a bit. Sepulchre so moved in to get rid of this Lancer and being Chronoport back to get rid of the Lancer back in the Unplayable Past. While Cron Aberrant is further up from here. I see this Sepulchre will be able to defend against the Lancer. Actually, might try to move into position to defend. No, it's just going to try to defend that one expansion. Not going to try to keep this expansion from being destroyed. Now, Cron Aberrant up at the 20 minute mark. Thinking he's getting rid of the expansion, but he is definitely only getting this information in the comm center. Or... He would if the comm center would move. Not not sure what's going on there. The comm center seems to have sort of locked up. But he's getting a chronoporter at any rate, so the chronoporter is at least useful. And this is the entire point of getting gate tech, really. Chronoporters and teleporters. So I expect that crime will be... There we go, chronoporting right now. And in case you're wondering, this match he actually has Chronoport with Commanders on. So... Except, of course, CISO being CISO, you actually have to wait for the recharge first. Unlike, say, Vekir, which gets the gate automatically. But Chronoport, noticing this, able to compensate for this, and will be Chronoporting. And only take the one tank order, since, like I said, Chronoporting with Commanders is on right now. It's an optional... It's an optional game lobby setting that's generally used because... Grekum gets a pretty big advantage in basically being able to chronoport with the Arcticus, and the other two species don't have anywhere near such advantages, so as a result, we asked for and got a setting for experimental, or experimentally having chronoports basically be able to run through commanders like teleport orders do. And it's something I actually haven't seen of before, so let's see what actually happens here. It looks like Quite a bit of damage is being dealt in the Unplayable Past, but not nearly enough. These Octoligos are actually doing quite well, given that they have, well, not getting the Twin Mar right on them. So they are still dying. These tanks are able to deal with quite a bit of damage here. Getting rid of the Sepi Ligo, and the Mar Tank now pushing in, and I think Ferreter has lost this. Ferreter losing his... Losing some of his reefs, losing part of the Progen pod class tribe, though... Actually, maybe not. Maybe he actually has a chance here. Ferreter looks like he's going to be chronoporting back from here. Well, building up a bit and then chronoporting the units back to try to help out what's well what he can. Though if he does that, it'll be a paradox, and we all know what happens there. So the Mar and Twin Mar are definitely in a much better position, having gone north rather than the rest of the units going south, which, as we just saw, leads to death. The Ligos are powerful units, but if they 
don't have the range advantage, don't get spotting, they can easily be overwhelmed because they don't have splash damage. Unlike Twin Mars, which definitely do have splash damage, and we see Crime is double checking what's going on with the Twin Mars as it's being destroyed by the Sepi Ligo. But able to last long enough to get rid of this. Can it get rid of the Akron? And. Yes, it just barely gets rid of the Akron. Ferreter losing that Akron right near the Unplayable Past Edge. Ferreter, however, has Chronoported back some units to try to defend against this. Or I think he has. He has some Chronoports going on, but not looking at them. There you go. Back when he is getting his Chronoport arrivals. And no, no additional Chronoports coming in. We don't see anything coming in, and these forces still not doing anything. The Seppi Bot and Farapod just sitting idly. Cannot afford to lose that. And no, that's the departure for the Seppi Ligo, but I don't see any arrival for any other units. It looks like this is it. These, this Akron is actually going to be destroyed. Maybe not. The Octo Ligo is able to stay back. Well, one of the Octo Ligos is able to stay back and stay alive. But we all saw this before. The Octo Ligos, regardless of their existence... Ferreter's still losing what he has. He doesn't actually have an Akron further up in the future. And I think he's lost the game. I think he actually doesn't have... Oh no, he hasn't lost the game yet. Cronenberg apparently having aborted that order for the Twinmar. And the Twinmar getting destroyed by the Octoligo is getting in place. The Octoligo is coming back to destroy the Twinmar and... Not quite able to get rid of it, but still able to deal some damage with it. And that might just be enough... And no, it isn't. No, the Octoligo is still not doing a whole lot. Not a bad idea, however, by Ferreter. And he is starting to get, be able to bootstrap himself in, but Crown Abbott, on the other hand, building up Blackbirds and probably building up additional Martanks as well, I'd imagine. But no, he does have his Twin Mar still in position. Actually, this is the unplayable pass. This is this is it. Ferreter might be able to corner back something to defend against this, and it looks like he's trying to. But we'll see what he does here. That was... We see two Chronoports right now going back, and if he set up the orders properly, they will be defending the Akron. But this is very close. Crimer might actually end up tearing it apart right now, but I think Ferreter still has a chance. It really depends on whether or not he actually queued the orders to get rid of this Twinmar. And it looks like he has not. No, the units Chronoporting back, one of them Chronofragging itself, but otherwise nothing happening here. So Ferreter has no Akron right now. He can't actually make any orders... His Akron is dead, and nothing can save it now. He can't actually send any orders after the green time wave passes through. It's it's gone. The Akron is dead. All he can do is look, I look passively in the unplayable past, seeing what little he might have been able to do. Or actually, no, did he? I think he actually managed to save it. This is a bit paradoxy, though. But this Octo Legal looks like he just got right in a position, just in time to deal with this. So it might just be enough. But it appears that Cronenberg actually sending back his forces once again, and getting Blackbirds as well. So from Cronenberg's point of view, Ferreter has lost, but Ferreter, it looks like he might just be able to paradox this in, and... Yes, he will! This arrival will actually stay on the timeline, it'll be permanent. And that will be it, Ferreter not observing it so it doesn't go off the timeline in case everything messed up. But yes, this is permanent, the paradox resolved in his favor. So he will be saving his Akron just barely, but that was a bit of a nail-biter. And at this point, most of the timeline has been unavailable to him for a large part of the game. So at even now, there isn't a whole lot that Ferreter can do, but Ferreter... See, where did he put his Akron? Because apparently his Akron is not dead at this point. In, oh no, Akron's not dead where he is. Or when he is. So once this blue timeline comes along and propagates across the entire timeline, then he'll be able to play again. But he's been unable to play for about five minutes. He's been basically locked out of the game. And in those five minutes, Cronenberg has built up a few Blackbirds, Cronenberg back a couple groups of units, and is sending back another set of units which should be able to get rid of what Ferreter had, even though Ferreter managed to save what he did have. So it looks like even with this, there is still enough coming in that will destroy it. The Blackbird coming in cloaked, so unable to be affected, just getting rid of these Octoligos. And it looks like ultimately able to get rid of the Akron, but we'll see shortly. But Ferreter did manage, like I said, managed to get that Octoligo back and did save it once. Cranamert looks to be trying to force him not to be able to save it again, but even now the green time of here should be able to propagate forward, having gotten out of there. And once again, this Farbot Zebby Bot actually keeping Cranamert's main base locked down, but Cranamert doesn't really care, I don't think. I mean, he has enough leeway across the map. He could actually take out this dome and this spire pretty easily and take the expansion there, I would think. 
But it doesn't matter, however, he does have himself in a nice position to take out Ferreter. Chronoporting back, the units he had chronoported before, these Blackbird and Mech. And Ferreter still has a bit of a chance, but no, he does not. Never mind, he has no chance. In the time that it took him to get back into the game, there was... There's nothing left. There's no other units to be built. All he could do is use these guys to build a Leo class, an Octoligo, split it down to a Sepian Faro, and then try to rebuild from there. But that's basically it. Ferreter... Ferris Jez GG, and that is the game. That was certainly a very chronoport heavy game. I haven't seen CISO use Gate Tech in over a year. So that's at least exciting for me. Sir, I hope that was exciting for you guys. So I'm going to have another game shortly. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment.